Now let us approach his great court and listen to his grand tale by his own words. I come from Isfahan, from a place called Jai, and I was the most beloved son of my father, who was a figure of high esteem among his people. We used to worship fire. I devoted myself to fire worship until I became custodian of the fire which we lit and never allowed to be extinguished. My father had an estate. One day, he sent me there. I passed by a Christian church and heard them praying. I went in and saw what they were doing. I was impressed by what I saw in their prayers. I said, this is better than our religion. I did not leave them until sunset, nor did I go to my father's estate, nor did I return to my father until he sent people to search for me. I asked the Christians about their affair and prayers which impressed me and about the origin of their religion. They answered, in Syria. I said to my father when I returned to him, I passed by people praying in a church of theirs, and I was impressed by their prayer, and I could see that their religion is better than ours. He questioned me, and I questioned him, and then he put fetters on my feet and locked me up. Then I sent to the Christians saying I had entered their religion, and I requested that whenever a caravan came from Syria, they should tell me before its return in order for me to travel with them, and so they did. I broke loose from the iron fetters and went away. I set out with them for Syria. While I was there, I asked about their learned man, and I was told that he was the bishop, leader of the church. I went to him and told him my story. I lived with him, serving, praying, and learning. But this bishop was not faithful in his religion because he used to gather money from the people to distribute it, but he would keep it for himself. Then he died. They appointed a new leader in his place. I have never seen a man more godly than he in his religion, nor more active in his bid for the hereafter, nor more pious in the world, nor more punctual at worship. I loved him more than I had ever loved any other person before. Then death approached him, and I asked him, to whom should I go? He said, O oh my son, I know no one anywhere who is on the path we have been on, so that I can tell you to go to him. But you have been overtaken by an epoch, in which there will appear a prophet, in the pure creed of Ibrahim. He will migrate to the place of palm trees. If you can be sincere to him, then do so. He has signs which will be manifested. He does not eat of charity, yet he accepts gifts, and between his shoulders is the seal of prophethood. When you see him, you will know him. A caravan passed by me on that day. I asked them where they had come from and learned that they were from the Arabian Peninsula. So I told them, I give you these cattle and sheep of mine in return for your taking me to your land. They agreed. So they took me in their company until they brought me to Wadi al Qura, and there they wronged to me. They sold me to a Jew. I saw many palm trees and cherished the hope that it was the land that had been described to me and which would be the future place of the advent of the Prophet, but it was not. I stayed with this Jew who bought me until another from Bani Koraiza came to him one day and bought me from him. I stayed with him until we came to Al Madinah. By Allah, I had hardly seen it when I knew that it was the land described to me. I stayed with the Jew, working for him on his plantation in Bani Koraitha until Allah sent his prophet, who later emigrated to Al Madinah and dismounted at Quba among the Bani Amr ibn Auf. Indeed, one day, I was at the top of a palm tree with my master sitting below it when a Jewish man came. He was a cousin of his and said to him, May Allah destroy Bani Kuba. They are spreading a rumor about a man at Kuba who came from Makkah claiming that he is a prophet. By Allah, he had hardly said it when I was seized by a tremor and the palm tree shook until I almost fell on my master. I climbed down quickly saying, What are you saying? What news? My master gave me a nasty slap and said, what have you got to do with this? Return to your work. So I returned to work. At nightfall, I gathered what I had and went out until I came to the prophet at Kuba. I entered and found him sitting with some of his companions. Then I said, you are in need and a stranger. I have some food which I intend to give out as charity. When they showed me your lodgings, I thought you most deserve it. So I have come to you with it. I put the food down. The Prophet said to his companions, Eat in the name of Allah. He abstained and never took of it. I said to myself, This by Allah is one sign. He does not eat of charity. I returned to meet the Prophet again the next day, carrying some food and said to him, I can see that you do not partake of charity. 
I have something which I want to give to you as a present. I placed it before him. He said to his companions, eat in the name of Allah, and he ate with them. So I said to myself, this indeed is the second sign. He eats of presents. I returned and stayed away for a while. Then I came to him, and I saw him sitting, having returned from a burial, and surrounded by his companions. He had two garments, carrying one on his shoulder and wearing the other. I greeted him, then bent to see the upper part of his back. He knew what I was looking for. So he threw aside his garment off his shoulder, and behold, the sign between his shoulders, the seal of prophethood, was clear just as the Christian monk had described. At once I staggered towards him, kissing him and weeping. He called to me to come forward, and I sat before him. I told him my story as you have already heard me describe the events. When I became a Muslim, slavery prevented me from taking part in the battles of Badr and Uhud. Therefore the Prophet advised me, go into terms with your master for him to free you. And so I did. The Prophet told the companions to assist me, and Allah freed me from bondage. I became a free Muslim, taking part with the Prophet in the battle of Al-Khandaq and others. With these simple clear words, Salman spoke of his great noble and sacrificial adventure for the sake of Allah, seeking after the reality of religion that led him to Allah and helped him to find his role in this life. What kind of a noble person was this man? Why did he leave everything? How did he sacrifice himself for Islam? We will discuss this in the very next video.